Um, we're going to talk about a couple of special ordinary differential equations and their solutions because they're going to come up later in the course to help us solve partial differential equations. Uh, the first one is the Bessel equation. Um, and here is the Bessel equation. Um, you'll see it's a second order differential equation, homogeneous, like we've been solving using series methods. Um, if I divide through by the x squared, I'll get a one over x for my p, then this over x squared for my q, which will tell me that, um, that zero is a singular point, but a regular singular point. And this is new. This is a Bessel equation of order new. Um, and the uh, initial roots are plus and minus new, which means we're guaranteed at least one Frobenius series solution to this differential equation. Um, and the larger initial root will be new. So this R here is going to be new or the larger initial root. But if we use our normal way we have been solving uh, series solutions for Frobenius series, we substitute in the Frobenius series for Y up here, with those substitutions, we get this. When we manipulate those sums and do things like we did in previous lessons, uh, we get a solution. It did require a little creativity. Um, someone was very smart in picking these coefficients or the, the C sub zero coefficients to involve a gamma function so that you got a closed form coefficient in the sum. So we didn't have to write out an infinite number of terms. Uh, you could recognize the pattern it involves this gamma function. This all looks scary, but we're just gonna call that J sub nu, which is the Bessel function of the first kind. So just think of this guy as like you would sine or cosine. No, we, we won't hardly be dealing with this thing at all, this infinite sum at all. Just think of it as this equation as this particular solution. Um, the other initial root would be minus nu. So that would, would give you J sub minus nu, which leads to the question you might ask, is that solution linearly independent of this solution? Because if that's true, you've got the two particular solutions, you would have the general solution. But anyway, this thing is called the Bessel function of the first kind of order nu. I'm just gonna call it J sub nu. Um, so here it is again. And we'll just give you the chart version. If nu is not an integer, then yes, this j sub minus nu is linearly independent of j sub nu. And these two guys, j sub nu and j sub minus nu, are the two particular solutions. And the general solution is then a linear combination of those two guys, those two solutions. But if nu is an integer, somebody smarter than me came up with this solution that is linearly independent of J sub nu. So this is the second particular solution. It's a crazy looking thing. Uh, we're just gonna call it Y sub N because now the nu is an integer N. Um, so these, this is, so this is a Bessel function of the second kind. So we have all our particular solutions to the Bessel equation. Uh, these are what they look like, at least for the integers. Um, and by the way, from this original equation, we should have known that the only singular point is zero. 
So the interval of convergence is from zero to infinity. Um, and you see these solutions start at zero and go all the way out to infinity. They each cross the x-axis an infinite number of times. That's, that will be important later on in the course. Um, Vessel functions of the first kind stay finite or bounded everywhere. Vessel functions of the second kind are unbounded as the argument approaches zero. That will become important later in the course. I say it blows up at x equals zero. That means it's unbounded at x equals zero. Um, this is a more generalized form of the Bessel equation. It has this alpha in it. Um, you can do a variable substitution and do some chain rule manipulation to get these more general, general solutions to this more general Bessel equation. Which means we can now write, if we see any equation in this form, we just write its solutions in, in one of these two forms, either a linear combination of uh, Bessel functions of the first kind or a linear combination of Bessel functions of the first and second kind. Take this, this one for an example. Here, this equation right here to this equation up here. You see that alpha squared is four, meaning alpha equals two. U squared equals one, which means mu equals one, which is an integer, which means we're gonna use this format as the, as the way to write the solution. And where there's an N, we'll put one. Where there's an alpha, we'll put two. So here's the way you would write the solution to this equation. Use Bessel equation, Bessel functions of the first and second kind. Here's a second example. Again, compared to this format, alpha squared equals four again, so alpha equals two. Nu squared equals one ninth, so nu equals a third, you know, the square root of one ninth. That is not an integer, but we can use this format, which is a linear combination of Bessel functions of the first kind. In this case, nu is a third, so we have j sub one third and j sub minus one third, and alpha was two, so we have arguments of two x. So this is how you write the solution to this equation. Let's take this as an example. That's like what we just did. Here, uh, alpha equals one and uh, nu squared equals a fourth, so nu equals a half. Here's how you write that solution. If you recall from previous work we did, we solved this guy the hard way, substituting in the Frobenius series, manipulating sums and the whole shebang. We recognized the infinite sums to be signs. And we said, here's the solution. This looks a little different from that, but actually it's not. If you go back and figure out what J sub a half is, and J sub minus a half is, you would get these. I'm not gonna go through all that, but these, when you put a put them in a linear combination, you just you can just absorb these square roots of two over pi into these um, arbitrary coefficients. So that these two solutions are actually the same. But now, when you recognize it as a Bessel equation, you can just write it this way without going through all the pain of manipulating sums, etc. Here's a few properties that might come in handy later, relating forms of this thing, x to some new power, j sub new. 
relating its derivative or relating its uh, integral. So you can, well, this be especially helpful is we can evaluate integrals that look like this in a way that doesn't involve an integral. We'll use that later in the course. Um, especially with j sub orders zero and one. These, these little substitutions will come in handy later in the course. There's also a modified Bessel equation. You'll notice the sign difference. Uh, we're only going to be interested in u equals integers here. Uh, and actually, I, I believe the only case that will come up for us later is when u equals zero. But here's Here's the general solution to the modified Bessel equation when nu is an integer. Instead of j and y, we use i and k for the modified Bessel functions of the first and second kind. Um, they look like this. Again, we're really only going to be interested in the is nu equals zero or n equals zero cases. But in this case, notice that, that they don't oscillate about the x-axis. Um, and they are, they're unbounded at different extremes. Modified Bessel equation or Bessel function of the first kind is unbounded as x approaches infinity. The modified Bessel functions of the second kind are unbounded as x approaches zero. Um, those features will be needed later in the course where they are unbounded. Um, and I think that's all we need to say about Bessel equations and Bessel functions for right now. We're really laying out the facts for use later. We didn't do too much derivation, but know that you can at least find the series solutions if you had to, using the methods we've already used. And so that uh, that's all I'm gonna say about the Bessel function. The next special function will be Legendre equation and Legendre polynomials.